everybody, Day really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Zoe Soroku, the fan disc material or the extras added to the PS3 version of the game. Today we're going to be reading Nagakura Days Past Part 2. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. April 1866. Frustrated with being confined to the compound, Nagakura defies orders and goes out into the town with the protagonist to get some fresh air. Breaking curfew could have serious deadly consequences though, which the protagonist attempts to convince him of. <laughs> yep, one of his best moments. Well, well, what do you think? You're looking at the product of years and years of intense training. <laughs> Dr. Ryojun Matsumoto was conducting a physical examination of the men. Face was such a powerful display, I was unable to speak. <laughs> he was one of the captains that nearly all the men loved and looked up to, not least because he acted as a sort of elder brother to most of them. But he's the kind of man who's always the first to jump in, and sometimes that makes him somewhat immature. <laughs> in a sense, though, that was Nagakura in a nutshell, somehow mature and immature at once. There was a lot more to him as well, of course, as I could clearly see. And a lot more that we'll get to clearly see when Kyoto Winds comes out soon. The relationship between the Shogun and Choshu was deteriorating. The first Choshu expedition had been in the works for a long time. After Ikeda and Hamaguri Rebellion, it had been all but inevitable. Now the Shogunate was preparing for a second expedition. Kondo and Ito had left for Western Japan as a sort of Shogunal envoy. September 1865 with the chief gone, Hijikata was in charge of the Shinsengumi. Without Kondo's mitigating influence, some of the men were beginning to chafe under Hijikata's harsh rule. One of those was... Shinpachi! In Days Past, Part 2 April, 1866 Alright, calm down, Shinpachi. Ah, oh, what the hell is up with Hijikata? He's been riding us way harder than usual. You're telling me. I was just trying to get permission to go out for a bit. But he wouldn't shut up until I gave him an itemized list of what I was going to do. Oh, good lord. I'm going to take a left at the first corner, and a right at the third corner. I don't know, guys. Cut him a little slack. If something bad happens while Kondo's out, it could really screw us up. He's got a lot on his mind. Aw, Sweet of Harada to speak up for him. Yeah, sure, I'll buy that. But tell me one thing. Why isn't he cracking down like this on Ito's men? Because that's Ito's job. Does he think he can shove us around just because we've known each other longer? Nagakura frowned and let his back fall onto the floor with a thump. He sat there for a few long moments, staring at the ceiling before he spoke again. Alright, that's it. We're going to the city. Everybody get ready. What? Right now? All of us? <laughs> Hijikata had been quite clear about how he felt regarding nighttime escapades. Damn right. What does he think we are, priests? I'm not sitting around in the temple all day. The night's young. We need to tell the rest of the guys. At least we can kind of talk back. But they have to do whatever he says. They're probably miserable. With that, he disappeared. I suppose we should go too. Someone needs to watch out for Shin. He seems pretty stressed. Yes, he does. Harada turned and looked straight at me with an eyebrow pointedly raised. Oh, what are you trying to say? You want to pawn the shower off on me? Oh, wait, you mean me? <laughs> he nodded as if I were the obvious choice. Would that be alright? Suddenly I felt even more trepidatious about Nagakuro's plan. <laughs> if it's me involved, then, uh, yeah, it's a different story. But clearly it wasn't going to be up to me. Nagakuro returned with a number of men in tow and we headed out into the city. He drank sake by the gallon. Uh, I think that would kill him. And before long, he was in a much better mood. Come on, boys. Let's hit the next one. Drinks are on me. Oh, I heard that place over there is pretty good. Thank you, sir. But, are you sure this is okay? Isn't the commander going to be upset that you bought us out? Oh, don't worry. I'll take responsibility for that. If he gives you any crap, you tell me and I'll shut him up. You're awesome, Captain Nagakura. We'd follow you anywhere. <laughs> oh, 
Although some of them had been nervous initially, Nagagoro's good humor and considerable generosity had buoyed the spirits of the warriors significantly. Even though none of them had the courage to say it, I began to suspect that Nagagoro was not the only person with complaints about Hijikata's strict rule. Uh, uh, Shin, don't you think we should be heading back? It's almost curfew. If we aren't home soon, we're gonna get it. Shouldn't we be getting it just for being here in the first place, even now? Curfew? Come on, curfew's for kids. Forget it, we'll be fine. Fine? If we break curfew, we have to, you know... Seppuku. Huh. Hijikata wants to make me cut myself open. He's welcome to try. All he has to do is order you. Perhaps it was the alcohol, or perhaps it was something else. But whatever it was, Nagakura wasn't listening to Heisuke. Um, Nagakura... He turned to look at me. Can I seduce you into going back? Hey, Chizuru. You're coming, right? No, you come with me. I... We shouldn't. Bad, bad, Nagakura. No, of course I'm not. We can't break curfew. But... Don't butt me, young man. I know Hijikata wouldn't want to make you kill yourself over something like this, but I don't think he's going to back down either. Yeah, he's not one to play favorites. I could feel several pairs of eyes on me, and suddenly I was very aware that I was lecturing a man who most reasonable people would cross the street to avoid. Well, not if they actually knew him. I didn't want him dead, though, so there was nothing for it but to push on. You two have known each other for a long time, right? You're friends. Don't think about the rules, think about your friend. I stared into his eyes until he turned away. I win! <laughs> he was silent for a few minutes, and it almost looked as though he was pouting. He is. When he finally spoke, he sounded like a child who just come out of a vicious and righteous scolding. Yeah, I guess you're right. He probably doesn't want me dead, huh? That's right. Behind him, I saw Heisuke and Harada let out silent sighs of relief. That's right, thank me, guys. You all owe me one. Yeah, he doesn't. I mean, think about it. How much have we all been through together? Yeah, good warriors like these aren't exactly a dime a dozen. Alright, let's pack it in. If we hurry, we should be able to get back in time. Nobody was anxious to incur Hijikata's wrath, so our exodus was swift. Before we began to move, however, Nagakura turned and bent down close to me. Hey. Thanks for stopping me. What? One of my less attractive traits is that once I get stuck on something, I kind of lose sight of everything else. It gets me in trouble every so often. Well, I'd say maybe a little more frequently than that. If you hadn't done what you did, uh, I don't think I would have even considered the consequences until it was way, way too late. So, I'm glad you were here. Thanks, Chizuru. No problem. Happy to save your life. Oh, it was nothing. I'm glad I could help. It's much harder to write off someone you've known well for years, even if you do find yourself at odds with them. In his heart, Nagakura had no real desire to hurt Hijikata, and I was certain that sentiment went the other way as well. Yeah, I'm certain too. It was already long past curfew. Uh, we were back before then, right? Please, tell me we were. <laughs> well, what's going to happen to us? Do you think he's going to make us... Um, maybe he went out. Maybe he's late. I won't let that happen. I'm the one who dragged you all out there, so if something goes down, I'll take the heat. But... I got no regrets. If I had to kill myself over something as dumb as this, then that's how it goes. And hell with the Shinsengumi. I mean, if we try and run, we'll be killed for sure. So might as well just face the music, right? Nagakura... He seemed oddly unconcerned for a man who might be about to die. Well, they deal with that every day. I didn't know what I could say to him. So I just watched as he walked off. Hmm. Right. Well, come on, guys. We'll be fine, don't worry about it. Shimpachi won't leave you twisting in the wind. Okay. At Harada's urging, we followed Nagakura toward the hall. Are we facing our judgment now? Hijikata was waiting for us, and he looked especially upset. Getting pretty late for you boys who aren't on night patrol. Seem to recall telling you what the punishment for breaking curfew was. Not scared of death, hmm? I could see some of the other warriors going pale as they looked nervously at one another. Hey, I forced them to come with me. I'm responsible for all this, okay? Don't remember putting you in charge, Shimpachi. I decide who's responsible, and I don't give a crap who invited who. You all broke regulations. For several long, tense seconds, 
Hijikata and Nagakura glared at one another. Uh, hey, uh, Hijikata, it's our fault too. We should have just told Shin to go home earlier. Then none of us would have... Hijikata's eyes pulled away from Nagakura's and slowly dragged across the rest of us like a sheet of fire. It burns! Rooms, now. You'll get your punishment later. But... but... Heisuke tried to speak up again, but it wasn't Hijikata or Nagakura who stopped him. Was it Harada? Yep. Come on, Heisuke, let's go. Wise choice. What? Why? You're really gonna leave him here to die? Harada didn't answer. He didn't even look at Heisuke. He just stared into Hijikata's eyes for one long moment. Then he grabbed Heisuke by the arm and began to haul him bodily from the room. You too, Chizuru. Uh, okay. I braved one furtive look back over my shoulder and Agakura as he walked away. From where I was, I couldn't see his face. I wonder if he's still glaring. Once we reached the hallway out of sight of Hijikata, Harada stopped. Then, very quietly, he moved toward the sliding door. <laughs> so we're gonna eavesdrop. <laughs> um... He only pressed an index finger to his lips, telling me to be quiet. Then leaned up close to the door, clearly trying to hear what was happening on the other side. Uh, I move up next to the door as well and follow suit, as did Heisuke. <laughs> of course we did. Well, what do you want me to do? I'm not afraid to die. So if that's what it's going to be, then just spit it out. He just a sigh. You're not happy with how I'm running things, are you? Every time you do something like this, that's always what it is. This wasn't the tone he'd used giving orders to the other warriors. Back in Edo, before the move to Kyoto, he'd probably spoken that way all the time. Well, yeah, I guess so. Kondo, too. Don't you think you're being a little bit too much of a hard-ass on some of this stuff? I mean, I know we're not exactly the kind of guys a girl takes home to meet their parents, but at least I know how to use the sword. And, I mean, tell me I'm wrong. That's why the Shinsengumi's where it is now, right? Because we knew how to fight, and we fought like our lives depended on it. But, now you take it easy on all these guys, who've never lifted a sword outside a dojo. And you come down like an iron club on all the people who've been here the longest. Doesn't seem right. For a long time, Hijikata was silent. Then, when he finally spoke... Sorry. Nagakura didn't seem to have expected that sort of reaction. As he was trying to find his footing again, Hijikata continued. But if I go easy on you, I get complaints. People saying stupid crap, like I give you the easy jobs, or the ones that'll make you look good, or you get more money, or that I just like you more. You really want people to think the reason you got your position is just nepotism. Still, maybe you're right. I might have gone too far. I apologize. Nagakura was silent. When he finally spoke, I could hear a bitter smile in his voice. Dang it, man. I just can't win with you, can I? <laughs> if you started lecturing me, or my responsibilities as a leader, then I was just going to leave. But when you start acting like we were back in Shiei Hall, and there's no way I can say no, you sure got me pegged. <laughs> I heard him scratch his head. That's some loud head scratching then. Oh, I screwed up too. I should have just talked to you instead of acting like a spoiled kid. Well, let's you and me get a drink sometime. We'll get something you can stomach. <laughs> That's right, I totally forgot Hijikata can't drink. <laughs> I can drink as much as you can. I just choose not to. Oh, you liar. They talked a little longer, about nothing in particular, and then Nagakura stood up and walked toward us. Oh no! Run! We started to back away. <laughs> Too late. Hey, what the hell? Have you been listening the whole time? Of course. Knowing you, I was worried you'd be at each other's throats the moment we left. And then you'd end up dead. What are you talking about? Last I checked, only one of us actually tried to off himself, Sano. <laughs> Harada and Heisuke looked at one another, relieved, and headed back toward their rooms. As I watched them go, I heard Nagakura mumble something to himself. Whenever he does that, I can't bring myself to leave, even if things are really bad. Else, he was thinking about it back then, too. What? If Kondo and Hijikata ever get, like, too big and forget where they came from, I'll leave and never look back. But there's still a part of Hijikata that hasn't changed since I met him back in Edo. And whenever I see it, 
I can't bring myself to leave. I could see nostalgia in Nagakura's eyes as he turned and looked back toward Hijikata. There was no mistaking how deep their bond was. Compared to the length of time they'd known each other, my time with the Shinsengumi barely amounted to anything. I see what you mean. If the Shinsengumi fell apart, I'd be devastated. So in a way, I thought I understood how he felt. It looks like this is just the beginning, though. A lot more coming down the pipe. I hope we can stick together. All of us. Oh, I wish. Me too. I meant every word I said. I wanted that too, more than anything else. Whatever happened, I wanted the friends I'd made to stay, even if I hadn't known them for long. Unfortunately, I wouldn't get my wish. Hmm. It still kills me every time, just knowing, you know, when we talk about how when you're in the good days and you know it's coming to an end and you're just like, oh, I just wish we could just be friends forever and all stay together like a cool group. It's just too sad when the band breaks up. Man, I can't wait to see how Shinpachi does on an actual route of his own. He's going to be so cute. I know it. He's already a big puppy dog. I mean, <laughs> he'll, he'll be adorable. And I'm going to really love Sanin because because he's got that dark side. Well, I'm going to have to make that its own video because it's a little bit long for me and it's super duper late. I've been recording like a lot lately <laughs> to release a lot of things, so I can't stretch videos quite as long as I had been before. So the next video will have to be, let's see, Shinsengumi Adventures 2. That's where we'll do the Shimbaro thing where we get to see him react to Chizuru as a geisha. Which should be interesting, because I don't think he'll be able to keep as calm as well the other guys. Even though some of the other guys didn't really keep so cool. <laughs> so, hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye bye everybody. <laughs>